What's going on guys? It's Apple Critics from AppleCritics.com. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you all of the iOS 13 hidden features. So without further ado, let's get started into this video. So the first thing would have to be dark mode. Now with dark mode, that's the main uh, feature that everybody's talking about in iOS 13. Uh, so if you don't already know what dark mode is, uh, if we go into settings, you're going to notice that the settings will now uh, be in the dark mode and also in some other apps you'll realize that it will have dark mode so that it's easier on the eyes and it just gives another theme uh, to your iOS device. Uh, but what you can now do with dark mode is actually change when you want to have dark mode appear automatically. Uh, so if we go into display and brightness and then once you go into display and brightness, we can automatically have dark mode uh, at a certain time. Uh, so if we go to where it says automatic, all I have to do is just simply tap, and then it's gonna give you options. Uh, so if we tap on options, it's gonna give us an option for dark mode. So you can have dark mode from sunset to sunrise. So the moment the sun uh, sets, then your device will have this dark mode. And then once the sun rises, you'll just be in the regular light mode. Uh, so it'll just automatically uh, go in between the light mode like this and dark mode uh, during the sunset and sunrise time. So once again, once it's the night, uh, you'll just have the dark mode. And once it's during the day, you'll have the light mode uh, just like that. So instead of manually changing between light and dark, you'll see that it will just automatically change. And it's more of a subtle feature and it's just a nice addition. And it's definitely one of the best hidden features. Now the next hidden feature is in the phone section. Now the hidden feature in this section is the silence unknown callers. Uh, so with silence unknown callers, it will allow you to uh, finally just silence out all those uh, telemarketers, all those unknown numbers and everything like that. So you can finally silence that out. And this is just a much needed feature. And if you just keep getting calls from random numbers uh, from different countries all around the world or just random numbers in general, this hidden feature is definitely for you. So all you have to do is just simply turn it on and then we'll finally be taken into effect uh, and that's how you use the silence unknown callers feature. Now the next hidden feature that is new in iOS 13 would have to be the quick path typing. Uh, so with the quick path typing, it's basically uh, the swipe typing that you can get that has been on Android for years, but it's finally on iOS 13. Uh, so all you have to do is just simply swipe on what you want to write. So let's say for example, So I said, this is a test. So I could say, this is a test, please subscribe. And you saw that I was using the quick path typing. And then I said, Apple critics right there. Uh, so that was what I did. And that's how you use the quick path typing. So that is how you can use the quick path typing. Now another feature is the hidden trackpad. Uh, so if you tap and hold on the spacebar, you'll see that you'll have this hidden trackpad so all the keys are now gone. And now we can just go to whichever letter that we want to change. Uh, so you can see that it's uh, pretty easy. So you can just uh, take a look at the please section, for example. And you can see that it's pretty fluid and really easy to take a look at. Uh, so you can see it's now a trackpad. So you go to this word right here. Then you can go ahead and exit out of that. And it's just that simple. So it's really uh, useful uh, that you have that hidden trackpad within the keyboard. Now another hidden feature is that we can double tap on a word. And I can see that it's highlighted and I can just exit out of that word. Then now we can also double tap on another word. And now you can see it's highlighted and we can just uh, press backspace. And now what we can also do is tap three times and then it'll highlight a whole sentence. And if we tap four times, it will highlight the whole paragraph. Uh, so it's very useful that we have those hidden features as well. And it will come in handy when we're writing long notes on our iPhone. Uh, and we just quickly want to edit something or if we're sending a text, we just want to edit out a whole sentence uh, or just a specific word. This is when those tapping gestures will come in handy. Now the next hidden feature is when you take a screenshot. Uh, so normally when we take a screenshot, all we have to do is hit that volume up button and then the side power button. So if we hit them at the same time, 
you'll see that it'll take a screenshot. Now, once you take that screenshot, you're gonna see that we have the preview. Normally, you wouldn't do anything with the preview, you just let it go. But in this case, you're gonna tap on that preview. And then once you tap on that preview, you're gonna see that you have all these controls. Uh, so you can uh, trash it, you can also share it, you can tap screen or full page. Then you have all these options at the bottom right here. So there's quite a few options that you can take a look at. And then uh, the main part of this is that you can actually screenshot a full page in iOS 13. Uh, so if we tap on full page, you're going to see that we could uh, screenshot the full page just like that. So you can scroll through the whole screenshot. You can see that it's very convenient in this way. And I really like that it's finally added to iOS 13. Uh, so that is the new uh, full page screenshot. So we can also uh, crop it if we want, but we can just hit done and then we'll have that full page screenshot. And once you tap on done, we can save PDF to files or delete the screenshot. Uh, so that is what you can do. Now the next hidden feature lies within the control center. Uh, so in the control center, you can see that you have uh, all these options and you're pretty much used to it. So there's no extra control center features that you normally would use. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is edit that and add uh, the new control center toggles that we want to have. So in order to do that, all I have to do is just go into settings and then we go to customize controls. And now I can add whatever we want to the control center right here. Uh, so let's say for example, we wanna add low power mode, and then we also wanna add screen recording, and then we wanna add the QR code reader right here. So that's what we can add to it. And then you can just go ahead and hit back, and then we're back to normal. So now what we can do is just access the control center again. And now you're gonna see that we have those new toggles. So we have the low power mode, we have the screen recording, and then we have the QR code scanner. Uh, so if we tap on low power mode, uh, we can hit continue. And then we have the low power mode right there, so we could just hit done. And then we can also uh, start a screen recording. So we just tap on it, and then we'll start screen recording. So now you can see it's officially recording my screen, so we hit done. And now what we can also do is just tap and hold on it. And then you can choose whether to have the microphone on for that screen recording. Uh, so the microphone is currently off. Now the microphone is on. Then you can just hit start recording and then it'll automatically uh, record uh, my screen with the microphone on. So it's just that simple. So you can hit stop and then we'll save it to the photos. Now another toggle that I have is a QR code scanner. So you can just tap on it and then we'll just find the code and then you can scan it just like that. So those are the controls that you can add to the control center. So you just have a bunch of them. So you can just enable dark mode as well. Uh, you can have the hearing mode so you can hear uh, with your AirPods from across the room. And then you have uh, voice memos and wallet and much, much more. Now the next hidden feature is within the battery section. Now in the battery section, you're gonna see they have the low power mode, you have the battery health, and you have some detailed analytics on it so you can see what's taking up all your battery. And then you have the last 24 hours and the last 10 days. Uh, but if we go into the battery health section, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Uh, so you're gonna see they have a maximum capacity of 100%, and then you're gonna see that you have uh, the peak performance capability, so it's a built-in dynamic software and hardware systems that will help counter performance impacts that may be noticed to your iPhone uh, battery as it chemically ages. So this is for the long-term health of your battery. And then you have the optimized battery charging. Uh, so with the optimized battery charging, it will actually reduce the battery aging, and then the iPhone will just basically uh, learn from your charging routine and see when is the best time uh, to finish charging past 80%. Uh, so let's say, for example, you always pick up your phone off the charger at approximately 7.30 a.m. So say, for example, you always take your phone off the charger at 7.30 a.m. So then what it will do is charge your battery all the way up to 80% uh, at 7 a.m. And then it will go from 80% to 100% by 7.30. So it just basically optimize how you charge your phone the best uh, in order to have long-term battery health. So the battery on your device will last longer and be more accurate and uh, not always run out of battery. Now the next important hidden feature is located in cellular. Uh, so if you go into cellular, then we go into cellular data options, and then we go into low data mode. And with low data mode turned on, it will help apps on your iPhone reduce their network data use. Uh, so it will just uh, lessen the amount of data certain apps use. So let's say, for example, if you're on Instagram, uh, it will maybe put your iPhone on 3G instead of 4G LTE. Uh, so it'll just try and lessen it. Uh, or if you're on 5G for that matter, just lessen the amount of data that an app consumes in order to uh, stay in bounds of your data plan. Uh, so it's just really conservative in that way. And that's why I really like the low data 
data mode. This is just groundbreaking. It'll, it'll stop you from going over your uh, data that you normally do. And it's just more cognizant and aware of your data plan as well and how you use your data on a daily basis. Now, the next hidden feature is in Safari. So now when you're in the Safari section, what you're going to do is scroll down to where it says close tabs. And normally, if you're like a lot of the Safari users, you always have a bunch of tabs open. Uh, so with the close tab section, it will automatically close all those tabs after one day, one week or one month. So this is just a genius feature. Now, this is made for me because I always have a bunch of tabs open uh, and I never close them. So this will just automatically keep track of them. And then maybe you don't want to put it on after one day, but maybe after one week you would put it there. Maybe after one month, it will just be perfect and just clear up uh, all the usage that Safari normally use and it will stop draining your battery. Uh, so this is definitely recommended and I definitely will be using this feature on a daily basis. Now the last hidden feature is in accessibility. So once you go into accessibility, this hidden feature will actually give you a virtual home button. Uh, so once you're in accessibility and then we go to touch and then once you go to touch, we go to assistive touch and then we press assistive touch right here. It will give us a virtual home button right here. So what we can do is move it around and we just move it towards the bottom right here. And then what we can do is tap on it and it'll give us all these features that include notifications, device, control center, home, Siri, and custom. So it's going to give us all these options once we tap on it. Uh, so what we can do is just go home and then you can see we're back home. And then we can see with a single tap, it'll open the menu. With a double tap, it'll do nothing. And with a long press, it'll do nothing. Uh, so you could change the single tap uh, to uh, just go home for example so you could just make it a home button uh, so if we do that you can see it's just a normal home button now uh, so we have it within ios 13 so after all this time uh, with apple going without the home button we now have a virtual home button so let's say for example we go into the clock we can just tap on that home button now and now we're back to uh, the home screen just like that so it's really useful in that way now, what we can do is just change the double tap uh, to open the menu. Uh, so if we double tap on it, you'll see that will open up the menu. You can go into notifications right here and just show you the notification drawer right there. And then we can just uh, double tap again. And then we can double tap and then you have your device. Uh, so you have your lock screen, uh, rotate screen, mute, volume down, volume up and more. And then you have the Siri. Hey Siri. Yes. And then we have custom right here. Uh, so we could change what we want custom to do. So it could pinch, double tap, and much more. Uh, so we could add to it. Once you hit that plus sign, we can just create a new gesture. Uh, so you can see that is what we can do. And then you can just press customize top level menu. And then we can add more functionality to it. So we could have six icons, or we could have seven icons or eight. So we could add some more to it. Uh, so we could have gestures, lock rotation, lock screen, uh, pinch, shake, screenshot, uh, Siri, speak screen, volume up, volume down, and much more. So you do a lot with assistive touch. And it's just nice that we have a virtual home button on our iPhone. So thanks for watching this video on all the hidden features on iOS 13. Uh, please be sure to subscribe, like this video, please smash the like button down below so you know you watch. Also be sure to check out AppleCritics.com for these Apple news news and more. Be sure to check out all the other videos on my channel and I will have the most coverage of the iPhone 11 on all of YouTube so definitely please stay tuned. And also be sure to follow me on Twitter at Twitter.com slash AppleCritics and also like my Facebook fan page at Facebook.com slash AppleCritics and thanks for watching.